Carson, Leno, Fallon. Now, it's Wine Talks with Paul K. Hey, welcome to Wine Talks with Paul K. And we are in studio today, beautiful Southern California, having a great day here in Monrovia. About to have a conversation with uh, G- Gina Wynn and Angie Alice out there in Clearwater, Florida. Introductions in just a moment. Hey, have a listen to a conversation I had with Marco Morano. I met him at the Fancy Food Show, and he was he stopped me in the middle of the aisle with a pink uh, Prosecco that was de-alcoholized, and I thought, oh, my God, this is going to be terrible. It was actually quite good. Have a listen to that podcast. We also have Michael and Andre, two guys talking wine in Canada, and you'll find out all about the way wine is consumed in Canada. And I had a great conversation recently with Rex Pickett, the author of Sideways, He's coming out. He's actually becoming a, quite a celebrity up in the Napa Valley. Listen to those. Wine Talks, of course, available on iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, wherever you hang out for podcasting and sponsored by the original Wine of the Month Club, now sporting the Napa and Rosé series of wines. But not why we're here. Here to have a fun conversation with, with Gina and Angie, Girl Gang Wellness. Welcome to the show. Thank Hi. you. Thanks for having us. I mean, this Girl Gang Wellness... Uh, Fascinated to hear what that's all about. We're going to talk about it in a minute, but more fascinated that we here we are. Now you're in Clearwater, Florida, so it's around eleven thirty, almost twelve o'clock, and I see two glasses of Chardonnay or white wine in front of you. What's what's going on over there? Well, we're celebrating. We're actually here at a work conference, but you know, it's you got to have a little fun. So we went down to the hotel bar and got us a couple glasses of Chardonnay. I mean, it's good work if you can get it right. Right. So. <laughs> Work hard, play hard. But the, exactly. so, what are you, what are we drinking this morning? <laughs> this morning that sounds kind of funny, right? Drinking this morning. We're drinking, <laughs> drinking this morning, you guys, with problems. Um, <laughs> we're making some Rombauer Chardonnay. Wow, that's pretty. Here. That's a lot of fortitude. Uh, first thing in the, I mean, maybe it's not the first thing for you guys, but it, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and then what's what's on the docket today? Since you have a is a conference started already, and what's the conference about? No, the conference will start officially tomorrow, but we came a day early to just kind of relax, get a few work things done and enjoy some time by the pool. Yeah, the conference is health and wellness coaches from all over the country. And we are here. We're going to be learning a lot from some great speakers um, about health and wellness, also about building your business, you know, on social media. And so we just wanted to have a day of relaxation before we actually hit the ground running tomorrow. So tell me what a health and wellness coach is. We're going to, we're going to tie this to wine eventually since you're mm-hmm. at the health and wellness convention, you're having a glass of wine before the convention even starts. So there's got to be a connection, but tell me what a health and wellness coach is for the listeners. Yes. So um, Gina and I started coaching about a little over four years ago. And um, we both came, we both found the program and we actually fell in love with it. And we're both, we've been friends for 25 years and former classroom teachers. And um, we decided to share this program with friends, family, you know, and people all over the country. And what does it do? What do you do? It's great because we are teaching men and women of all different ages how to properly fuel their body and work out effectively without depriving themselves because that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's a lifestyle, sustainable lifestyle. We want people, you know, we don't want you to have to like give up desserts, give up carbs, give up wine, wine. So we want, we teach men and women how to fit it all in. We're basically the anti deprivation. So, oh, that's the anti deprivation. You know, that could be in a whole new clothing line, the anti deprivation. -deprivation. The anti social social club kind of thing, right? So, (laughs) so if I'm, if I'm struggling with uh, what weight, uh, healthiness, um, uh, age, I I find you and we're going to do what? We are going to set you up with a nutrition plan. We are going to ask you what your goals are. You know, maybe you want to lose some weight. Maybe you want to build some muscle. Maybe you just want a healthier mindset on body image. And so we're going to work with that. We're going to give you a nutrition plan. We're going to give you a workout plan. We're going to pair it all together. um, And we're going to teach you how to lose fat, gain muscle, gain confidence without having to go through a quick fix and get rid of all the things you love. We just make sure you, you are able to fit it all in, in moderation. 
Moderation. We're going to check in with you, right? And we're going to check in with you each and every day mm -hmm. to help keep you accountable, um, answer any and all questions that you might have, and be your biggest cheerleaders. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a, a very, it seems to be a very pertinent industry thing, to, you know, the people today's environment, particularly post COVID, where there's a lot of stress. I mean, you, every, you can't, you can't uh, turn on the TV without hearing about some awful event because it's just got, it's just, and I believe this, that it's just gotten to people and it's just triggered a lot of fear and a lot of kind of craziness actually. So um, it seems like a post COVID environment that this is a very positive thing for people to be doing. What, what kind of reasons are you hearing predominantly, predominantly when people come to you and say, look, I just, I got to get through something. A lot of, <clears throat> reasons is, you know, of course, COVID, COVID happened. We actually did really well during COVID with our business because things were shut down. Um, but then, you know, when, when everything opened back up, people kind of just decided, you know, we're going to restaurants again, we're going to vacations again, we're celebrating. And so they started to really need our help <laughs> after COVID as well. And, you know, a lot of people come to us saying, I'm doing all the things and nothing's working. Mm -hmm. I'm giving up carbs. I'm working out in the gym seven days a week. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I'm eating under 1200 calories a day. And what's funny is all the things they're doing that we've learned over time don't work. Mm. Right. <laughs> you can't survive on, I mean, you can survive, but you can, eating less than 1200 calories, it's just going to slow your metabolism down. You've got to fuel it and you've got to fuel it with all the right things. And all the right things do include carbs and fats and protein. So you have to make sure you're fueling it correctly. And that's what we do. We give you a, a custom nutrition plan. And here, this is what you need to be eating. And I think that a lot of people, there's a lot of um, just the diet industry and the diet culture gets a bad rap, which rightfully so, right? Because there's so many quick fixes out there and little pack prepackaged, I like to call them prepackaged promises where you eat this and you're going to lose that. And it's just not sustainable. No. And we found we're like, if someone is going to, if they really want to make changes in their health and wellness, they need to find a true lifestyle and something that's sustainable because you, we enjoy going out to eat and we enjoy traveling. And if you feel like you can't have dessert or a glass of wine with dinner, then you need to call us. <laughs> we need Particularly to the wine because, situation. I mean, I fully endorse right. it. You know. <laughs> I'm, and, I'm, I know, and it makes, it breaks my heart listening to people say like, oh, I can't have that. Or I, I feel, you know, guilty if I have a glass of wine or whatever. And I'm like, no, but this is your life and life is meant to be enjoyed. And you can still make those, you know, gains and goals with your health and wellness when by still enjoying the things that you love. Yeah. So it's the number one thing, weight loss, uh, you know, even mental stability because, you know, through nutrition and exercise, we're going to like, I went to hot yoga last night. Right. And yeah. well, I don't subscribe to the hocus pocus part of all that and the third eye stuff, <laughs> but you know, the discipline of getting through a class, my brain has to focus on what I'm doing. I can't wander because you'll never get through it. And that's kind of the discipline of it. So is, is this not take just discipline in general, or you provide the opportunities to have the discipline because it's not so egregious, not so difficult. And I, well, I won't say it won't be difficult. I'm sure it is, but that there's encouragement and there's uh, optimism to what the result's going to be. Yes. So a big part of it is be, uh, being accountable. And so we do daily check-ins, you know, how's it going? How, you know, how are you feeling? Let us know, like, and we want them not just to focus on the weight loss, but we also, every week we say, you know, let's see, let's look at your sleep. Are you sleeping better? How's your energy? You know, there's like small victories on, along the way of your mm -hmm. weight loss journey and your health and fitness journey. So we really make sure that we pinpoint and and those little victories throughout the throughout their journey because we're not just it's it's a mindset shift. Right. A lot of people have a really hard time thinking. You know, you you're telling me I can have wine and lose weight. That's just not possible. It is possible. <laughs> it is. I like where this is going. So. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I think that people are so focused, and I think that after coaching for over four and four years, they're so focused on that number on the scale. But we're like, okay, stop with the number on the scale. If you can 
feel like you can have a glass of wine and not feel guilty or feel like you have to work out 30 minutes more or hit the gym or, you know, eat less the next day. We feel like that's a huge, we like to call them non-scale victories mm-hmm. because it is. A non-scale, I like that, a non-scale victory. Non-scale victory. That's huge. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a lot of news, a lot of new programs on TV. Like We've been through a dozens. There was Scarsdale. Then there was the 120-year diet my dad was on, which actually he lived to 93. And I fully believe that that had a lot to do with uh, the 120-year diet, which is from Dr. Wolford, who was the doctor in the biosphere in Arizona years ago. So I think there's huge, obviously there's too, huge value. It's not what I think, it's what you know. But, but I've noticed on TV that the latest programs that they're touting that these aren't quick fixes that somebody will get on and say, Hey, I lost a hundred pounds in you know, in 10 months, or I lost, you know, 40 pounds in seven months. And so that's kind of a slow burn. Is that what you guys want to happen? That's a healthy, sustainable way to lose weight because we definitely have a lot of women come to us and they say, you know, I was on whatever program and I lost 20 pounds in one month and then I gained it back as soon as I got up. Of course you did because you were, you were depriving yourself. And as soon as you go back to those fun foods and drinks that you've eliminated, sometimes you end up binging and and then you just gain the weight back. (laughs) Sometimes more, right? Right. And it's, it's bad. And then if you think about it, like you didn't gain all this weight in a month or in a week, right? It's been a progression over mm-hmm, time. So mm-hmm. we're trying to wrap our minds around like and, and tell clients like, listen, this didn't come on like that. So it's not going to go off like that, right? So it's going to take some time. And, right. and what's great is slow progress is the best progress. Yeah, it is. And so you have different structures for different age groups. Uh, I'm 64. You know, my metabolism is probably slower. Um, you know, getting through hot yoga. <laughs> Everybody goes, how is it? I go, it's hot. You know, it's what, <laughs> so um, you have to structure this around the age group. You have to structure this around probably uh, some kind of body style, I suppose. So some people have have more resistance to certain types of foods. I mean, how do you structure all that? Um, we do, We take a lot of information from our clients. You know, age is a factor as well. Um, how how much you move your body throughout the day. Um, you know, are you willing to do workouts? Strength training is a huge thing for all ages. Mm-hmm. We really encourage, you know, women and men of all ages to strength train, but really are the, the clients that are 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, they, that's when you really should be lifting weights uh, as opposed to cardio, because that's going to burn calories all day. Mm-hmm. Your muscles burn calories all day when you're lifting weights and it's so much better for your bone health and joints. Yeah, your bone density. So huge. it's a huge thing. You know, we want, like, I see older women in the grocery store and I'm thinking, you know, they need to be lifting weights just to the fact that if they were to fall, the chances mm-hmm. of them, you know, being in the hospital is going to be tenfold, 10 times more. If they were strength training, they'd be, their bones would be so much stronger. So it's just, it's, it's, it really is. That's what we tell all ages. But then we also have custom plans. You know, I'm not going to tell a, a 70 year old woman to lift, you know, 50 pounds. <laughs> yes. Right. Bench pressing 220. No, right. No. So, but I, so we do customize it that way. You know, we have modifications, we have low impact, but we just think moving is a huge part of it. We had a years and years ago when, and I think this idea is not it's not new but it's reasonably contemporary where people my age and in french you say a, a certain age uh go to the start going to the gym i mean you would you wouldn't do I, I look at my father even who was a, a prolific exerciser i mean the guy was always exercising but he came from a foreign country came from an arabic country that you know exercise is not part of their regiment it's not part of their culture and uh he was prolific at it he lived to be 93 and he was very alert and healthy just you know it just wore out basically at that point and i thought i saw the culture at culturally is that a word (laughs) culture (laughs) well let's let's try something else uh we had a physical therapist come to the rotary club here and he did all these slides about people of 65 plus entering into the gym arena and exercising like that and he goes so we took a study of 100 
people, men and women over 65, put them in the gym. And then the next slide he goes, and they all died. And then he starts laughing. He goes, no, actually, <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> actually, all the, <laughs> what they found after was that the, the resistance to disease, the, the, the body fat, all those things changed in a rather positive way. And the brain function changed rather positively too. So I think that's, I think it's a very important part of what we're doing um, for what you guys are doing. How does, how does the organic and biodynamic movement fit into all this? Because in the wine world, we'll get into that conversation here now, but in the food world, you know, you go to whole foods, you think organic foods are better for you. If you think biodynamic foods are better for you, is that, something you guys talk about honestly it's a gimmick <laughs> That's <Yep>. personally, right? <laughs> we're gonna put that right out there on the table now it's a gimmick and it's all a lot of people just a lot that's just not feasible for a lot of people and just like with the economy and budgets and things like that we we definitely lean into the whole foods but we're like if you need to grab some frozen fruits or veggies and things like that that yeah it's okay <laughs> it is we make we say focus on if it comes, if it has a mother or comes, comes from, from the, the ground, ground, then it is something you should be enjoying. That's a whole food. That's a, that's a hearty whole food. And whether it's organic or frozen or wherever, you know, do what you can, get and, what you can. And we're a big 80, 20, we're the 80, 20 girls. Mm. So 80% of the time we want to be fueling our body with those whole foods. And the other 20% of the time we want to be enjoying the things that yeah. like to enjoy yeah where does lucky charms fit in that uh, i'm kidding so. that would be the 20 <laughs> percent for 20 sure percent. <laughs> <laughs> well it's an important thing in the wine world too uh and it's a very big movement um you know I, organic wines are, in my opinion are not an excuse and particularly biodynamic wines are not an excuse for it to taste like kombucha or some kind of health beverage because so much of wine and food prior to insecticides, pesticides, and herbicides were organic anyway. In fact, you grew things organically. You didn't have these other methods to, to butcher up the fields. And I, you know, in the wine world, I think there's, it's just, a, it is kind of a fad to a certain extent. Right. As far as the marketing of it's concerned. Like we'll put on the bottle that's organic and we'll put on the bottle that's low carb. We'll talk about that now, but Look, so many of the wines were organic anyway. I mean, the Burgundians didn't have it. The Bordelais and Bordeaux, they, they invented copper sulfate to protect the mildew like in the 40s. I mean, it's, it's kind of contemporary when you think about it. Prior to that, they didn't have it. So it was always right. organic. And I've had vineyard, vi uh, wine uh, makers and vineyard managers come to my show and say, you know, my kids are crawling around in that yard, in the vineyard, and they're getting pesticides. So we try to be as minimal as possible anyway. We, we don't really want to do it. And so I think you're right. I think it's part of giving, and, and by the way, organic and biodynamic does not mean it tastes better. I think we've learned that, right? <laughs> so, no. I mean, no. how many this is bitter, a little pricier in the food industry for sure. Yeah. Yes. And how many bitter carrots have you had from whole food? I'm sorry, we shouldn't pick on whole foods <laughs> from the organic market. Um, so from the, from the alcohol standpoint, I lost almost 40 pounds when I turned 50 and I've kept almost all of it off. And I had alcohol almost every night, you know, <laughs> so I say yeah. that tongue in cheek. Um, how do you work that into the regiment? Definitely. And we teach our clients, like if you are someone that wants to enjoy that nightly glass of wine, you need to make sure that you're moving your body during the day that you are fueling your body. Cause we've got a lot of people that, come from the the mindset of okay well i'm gonna enjoy wine tonight i'm not going to eat lunch and we're like no 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 no. you want to definitely make sure that you're eating lunch and it's important to hydrate right mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you're drinking enough water because i guarantee you're not going to be feeling very well if you just enjoy your wine or one two what how many of your glasses at night and you're not properly hydrating, you know, leading into that. And so it's all about balance. So if you're going to have this and make sure that you are fueling your body, you're focusing on protein, mm -hmm. you are definitely and moving your body. Like we were just talking about is, is so good, both mentally and physically. And, um, taking that time to have your nightly glass of wine, if that's what you want to have, or one, two, how many ever you want to have, we're teaching our clients that that's feasible and you can still make the, that progress towards your goals. 
and also it's the wine's not what's putting what's going to make you gain weight it's the inhibitions if you <laughs> overindulge while you're drinking wine <laughs> So if you are, if you have that glass of wine and all of a sudden you, you didn't eat lunch. And so you're thinking, oh, I'm hungry. Your decisions are going to be a little bit more skewed. Maybe you want those salty potato chips instead of, you know, mm -hmm. carrots and hummus. So it's like, you have to make sure, like Angie said, being proper, properly fueled before you have that wine or while you're having that wine so that you're not craving the, you know, <laughs> The cheesy pizza or the Doritos. Doritos. Yeah. <laughs> That's where that comes into play. You know, I think there's, you said two things I think are very important. One, the dehydration factor is huge. I mean, people don't drink enough water. I just realized that the other day when I, I went to hot yoga as well. And I, the next day my sides were hurting, which were your kidneys and this, because clearly was, I was dehydrated. And so I started drinking much more water the last few days and it came, it, everything balanced. But alcohol, you know, magnifies the dehydration. Caffeine magnifies the dehydration. You know, yes. it's their, um, what's the word they call them? Um, so you're not, you're not recommending calorie substitution because let's say a glass of Sauvignon Blanc, and we'll talk about this in a second, uh, is 120 calories, which is five ounces. And just for the listener, a bottle of wine is about 25 ounces and a regular restaurant pour is probably one fifth of that. So it's about five ounces maybe six in a good pour, 120 calories doesn't seem like a lot, but you're saying, well, we're not going to ask you to substitute the 120 calories for something earlier in the day. We're just, it's just part of the calorie. Do you count calories in your, in your program? We actually count macros. Macros. That's what we, macros. So yeah. I'll add up to some number that you have to sort of manage. Yes. And so it adds up to calories. Yeah. adds up to calories. So, I saw the other day at, at the market and I did a little rant, you know, a little Instagram rant, um, you know, for us in the wine industry, wine is about the experience. We're totally um, offended by some of the stuff on the shelves at the market. We don't think you should be drinking some of the stuff that's, that that's being put on the shelves. Uh, uh, the wine industry is kind of like shampoo and, and salad dressing and toothpaste. You know, those, those best spots in the market are bought by the big brands that, that, that sit there. That's why you see the same brands at the market. Um, we're against that. We, we want people to experience wine. We want them to right. feel something from wine. We want them to have a glass of Rombauer and go to the pool. I'm just kidding. So, yes. yes. <laughs> um, and here comes these locale things. What I see you're shaking your head. So that's good. <laughs> no, we are, we are not all about that at all <laughs> because if you're going to eat or drink something, it's, you want to enjoy it. Right. You know, so why are you even eating it if you're not enjoying it? Correct. Thank you. <laughs> That's just it, our it, it can't taste that great if it's going to be, if there's something missing from it. So then, then what's the point? That's what we think. <laughs> well, you know? the concept of wine is it's supposed to represent a time and a place. And it's, you know, it's kind of interesting because it's one of the few products in the world that you can carry halfway across the world, plop on the desk and say, this is who we are. And this is when we were, when this was made. And it represents something uh, culturally going on at that moment that the wine was made. And I think when you de-alcoholize it or you try to butcher it with sugar, or you try to add flavors to it or, or change it, you've all of a sudden lost that. Yes, exactly. And honestly, you know, you're not really saving that many calories. Whenever it's a low calorie, uh, it's, you know, it's maybe 20 calories less. Yeah, what, I, calories. you're right. <laughs> so uh, it's not worth it, right? It's really worth it. It's just like eating, like, your, do you want to eat the real pizza or do you want to eat some fat-free cardboard, cardboard <laughs> bunch of grossness? You want that real piece of pizza, right? I mean, it's the same with wine. It's the same with anything. I think I'm going to go out and say this because my wife and I try to figure this out and I'm going to talk about the, the, the fake meat Oh. And what what is it that you is so attractive to over processed whatever it's in there that if anything. you don't want to eat meat then don't eat meat and why do you want to eat something that tastes like meat? <laughs> and like you said, it's, it. it's probably over processed. It's no healthier than no, it's know. not healthy. No, and same with wine. You know, there's most of those wines now that they're marketing, and I don't know if it's a if it's a fad. Uh, I'm sh I, I'm hoping that it is. And I think in the wine industry, we fight this. We've been fighting it forever. White's Infidel in the 70s. 
which was great to bring people to the tasting table that had not been there before. So that was a good thing. And maybe that's what these uh, 19 crimes and Martha Stewart Chardonnays do as well. I don't know. But we eventually want people to land on a healthy, not healthy, but a, a, a representation of a wine that takes you someplace other than where you're sitting and has a, stimulates a conversation and does the things it's supposed to do. And I, and I don't, I don't think the conversation is about how many calories is in this glass or how many carbs are in it or, or how much alcohol is in it. No. Is that a conversation? No. I mean, is that what you talk about when you? Yeah, we do. We, when we talk with our clients, you know, we talk about just because it's a, says fat free or it's low calorie, you know, you're going to get so much more out of, um, what you're wanting to eat, you're going to be so, you're going to feel so much better. You're not going to be starving. It's going to taste better. It's going to give you a better experience. That's how the wine is too. We don't tell them to go to their local grocery store and grab a, a low carb wine or, or a low cal wine or, anything. you know, or even like a, a low carb, low calorie seltzer. Like those don't, those water down. Yuck. Yeah. <laughs> we, we don't, we don't recommend that. We just tell them like fit it into your day. Like if you, cause you can definitely have two glasses of wine at night and in during the day, fuel your body with whole foods with, you know, a nice big salad with broccoli and cucumbers and chicken mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, salmon. Mm -hmm. And so you, yeah. you can have a great day of whole foods and, a, you know, feel very satisfied and satiated and then join and then have your glass of wine and not feel guilty at all. I mean, I have found, and I'm a gin guy, thanks to my father uh, as well. So people always say, what's your favorite wine? I go, Gordon's gin. So they, <laughs> <laughs> but you, know, you do come home from work, you're tired, you, you haven't eaten since lunch. Maybe there's, maybe you had a little snack or something, you know, some popcorn or something. But yeah, you have that first couple slips of wine or, or I have a martini and all of a sudden I do start sort of picking at things Yes. That I probably shouldn't bread, uh, you know, I'll take <laughs> grab a little cheese out of the drawer and throw it on a cracker. And all of a sudden I've just blown the whole thing. So how do we, how do we prevent that? So what I like to do is, you know, I'm a busy mom and I have 14 year old identical twin boys. And so, wow. you know, and I'm like, <laughs> yes. And I'm, I'm sorry. trying I'm, to I'm happy. <laughs> no, they're great. They're great, Paul. Right. Yes, but, they're great. They're sweet. And Gina has girls. And so, when I'm preparing dinner, I do. I like to pour myself a glass of wine and I always put out like a good veggie and hummus tray, you know, so that while I'm snacking that, you know, cause I'm always going to snack and my, my boys as well, I'm having a glass of wine and making dinner and I have a good spread of veggies and hummus. And so I'll put some grapes out there as well. And then that way, then when I have maybe my next glass of wine, I sit down and enjoy dinner and I have not hit up the chips or the, you know, yeah. cookies that are in the pantry or anything like that, that I'm, you know, trying to set myself up for success. <laughs> I, you know, I'm glad the, you said hummus because it's, you know, it's mostly chickpeas and what tahines, tahine dressing, right? So it's, all, it's sesame paste uh, blended with um, some kind of bean. It could be anything, white beans. The other night uh, we went to the Super Bowl party at a friend's house and my daughter, my youngest daughter uh, made the hummus. She made a basil one and a, and a regular one, but she used my mom's recipe. And so I'm like, I tasted this. I didn't know she had made it. And I looked at my wife. I go, this tastes like my mom's hummus. She goes, oh yeah, Lena made it. My youngest daughter, I go, there's something very special about that. Sort of that, that I don't know. I thought she made the best hummus around. So, but it was so weird because I, she, you know, I, I haven't had her hummus for probably 10 years. And I just tasted this. There's such a memorable thing, you know, yeah. smell and taste are such a memorable um historical feeling that we can have like we can have something as a kid and then not have it for 40 years and then smell it and go oh yeah i remember this right how do you how, and memories how is it hard to adjust what you're cooking to be healthier like let's say i want to make chicken piccata or something which is like usually a lot of butter how do we and flour how do we is it hard to do or is there just simple things that we can do to make it healthier as we go along the day you eat what you want, Paul. If you want to. Wow. I'm going to write this down. <laughs> yes, Paul. And we're just going to teach you how to plan that. If you're having chicken piccata for dinner, maybe you have a lighter lunch, right? Maybe you have a loaded salad with like some grilled chicken and veggies and more of a, you know, vinaigrette type dressing on that. And you're going to have, you know, some 
like an apple for a snack or banana or leaning into those like fruits and veggies. If you're going to maybe have that dish that has a little bit more fat, a little bit more carbohydrates for yeah. dinner. God, so it. I guess I'm going to text my wife and say we're making chicken piccata <laughs> tonight. <laughs> we're coming over. We're heading that way. Yeah, yeah. You, should. Why, you know, we we're busy moms and we cannot like God bless some of those people that you can find on Pinterest and cookbooks that have the list of 975 ingredients and then you got to marinate it and you got to saute, saute it and all, I mean saute we're like what saute and that's great that's great but we are busing kids to and from practice school all the things right and we're, we're just living our kids social life dream right now as moms we're just like <laughs> where, do, where do you need to go boo and so we actually developed a cookbook for busy moms to try to you know, help them when they need to have usually about five or so ingredients. Mm -hmm. Dinner can be on the on the table in about 30 minutes or less. Yeah. Yeah. All healthy. I'm interested to know what they're going to be serving at the health and fitness conference for lunch. That's what I want oh, to know. Oh, well, it's good. Uh, it you know, good. they're going <laughs> to. A lot yeah. of protein. It's going to be a lot of protein, a lot of chicken, a lot of salmon, <laughs> a lot of shrimp. They're going to load us up with protein. You know, it's interesting thoughts because you think whenever you have a child and I've had, I raised three girls myself. Um, and when they're, when they're infants, you're so concerned about what you're putting in their bodies. Of course you should be, but you know, you test all the Cheerios, you see which one's got the hell is it Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or is it the regular GM, you know, General Mills to to and you just spend so much time on it. And it seems like that actually you could make some simple, fast decisions, uh, you know, maintain these re reasonable, maybe it's the 80, 20 rule at this point that you're just sort of being cognizant of certain things, but not just busting your rear end to make sure that, you know, everything you put in their body is organic or biodynamic. We survived. Yeah, we're yeah, fine. Right. <laughs> weren't, weren't we stomach sleepers and like oh, all the yeah, things, all those things that they were. <laughs> we're I mean, not bubble wrapped and we're, we're, we're here. We're having fun <laughs> with you all. And <laughs> yeah. I don't think we had seatbelts in my mom's car when I was growing up. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When we were babies, the same. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> Uh, I was, th th I will say, I, th I don't know if I said this earlier in the show, but the fancy food show, which we've been going to for years, we used to do gift baskets here and, and, and you go to the show, it's crazy. This year's in, it was in Vegas because no one wants to go to San Francisco anymore. And you go up and down the aisles. There's, you know, the, the first booth might be cheese and the second booth might be mortadella and the third booth might be yogurt. And the fourth booth might be, you know, Tabasco flavored jelly beans. You never know. It's just in any order. And this fabulous chocolate. And I was reading some follow-up articles, and the follow-up articles were the de-alcoholized uh, cocktails was the primary sort of takeaway. Now, a couple of years ago, the takeaway was organic foods or biodynamic foods, and then before that, who knows what it was. And so I'm, dry, I'm going down the aisle, and, and I stop. I'm, I'm in the industry, right? I want to taste these things. Like I told you about the sparkling Prosecco, which actually had some flavor. I had the guy on the show. It was kind of an interesting conversation. Okay. But then – the cocktails i don't get it i don't understand why you're gonna fake a manhattan mm -hmm. and why are you gonna fake anything right. just get the manhattan glass and pour whatever you want <laughs> yeah right and I, i'm a cock i, I kind of consider myself sort of a specialist on the old school cocktails i study the history of them and i study the formulas and i make them for my friends and that's part of the ritual you know, it's part of right. the whole thing is like the, the, the mixology of it. You know, why, why do I want to fake? Why do I want to taste something that's supposed to taste like that? It just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to take away on this, uh, of, of this event that you, how many days is it? And what, what's, what are you trying to get out of it? Um, it is starts tomorrow. We'll be here till we leave Sunday. So it's super quick. Um, we're going to learn just next level health and fitness. So we're going to probably have some talks about hormones and how that plays into someone's weight loss journey. Um, we're going to talk about, uh, really a big piece of it is building and, and reaching as many people as we can. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, social media is a big part of our business as I know it is, is yours too. Um, just reaching as many people as you can to, to help them or to have them listen to your podcast or whatever it might be. And so we, you know, when we started, we just, we started with friends and family mm -hmm. and that was I, like, you know, we didn't know if we would be able to reach anybody else. And now it's been over thousands of clients mm, that's that great. we've reached, um, just sharing, you know, sharing tips and tricks on health and fitness on our social media accounts, 
Um, and what's awesome is we've yeah. had several, like we started with our core group of clients, like we like to call them our OGs back in, they've been with us for over four years and, mm. you know, people saw their results and they told friends, their friends and families and coworkers and all that. We actually have clients in Canada. We have a, we actually have a client in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. It's funny because when we check in with her, we're like, what time is it there? You know? So <laughs> it is, it is awesome. And actually the last day of the the um, conference where we'll be doing a group X training where we'll be getting certified in personal training. So in group fitness. So, yes. Yeah. There's lots, to, lots to learn while we're here. Well, let's talk, let's talk about business for a second. Then we're, we're going to talk about social networking and how do you attract people? And let's just kind of get in the weeds here okay. because um, one of the things that post pandemic world has done in the wine world, it's completely screwed up. I mean, no one really knows this traffic has plummeted uh, on Google of uh, looking for certain types of things in the wine industry. Um, what have you seen post pandemic for, like you said, during pandemic, you know, the wine business was very good. Um, it literally dropped off the cliff the month when, when it was repealed, so to speak. And, and now everybody in this industry that has a direct to consumer business is, you know, we're, we're seeing some pretty awful numbers, you know, to, to survive. What have you seen post pandemic? Yes. So definitely during the pandemic, we had a huge influx because everything was dropping off and then people started <laughs> to go out again. And then it, they were like, oh, okay, I'm starting to go out and going out to eat and vacationing more and all the things. And so it, our business continued to build, right? And it's something that continues to keep going. You know, yeah. the more, I feel like the more um, people travel and the more that they are going out to dinner and getting back into their quote, normal lifestyle, they need a health and fitness program more than ever. For sure. So are they, are you seeing on the social side, more traffic let's I mean, let's get into the weeds about facebook marketing instagram i don't know if you're on tiktok um are we is yeah. it all word of mouth is it sort of organic you know like let's just let's go to the basic premises that haven't changed in social networking since they came out the idea of social networking is one person tells 10 people and those 10 people tell 10 more and they tell 10 all of a sudden it's told 100,000 people that's the premise of it all it's never changed right. Uh, whether you pay for that ad or whether you uh, do it organically, it's still the same concept. And I, the way I like it is like if I if I have to listen to a boring story around the ten table ten person table at a rotary meeting, the, that's old social networking, <laughs> right? And maybe I, one right, person goes home right. and tells their spouse the same story, and now the story is dead. But on Facebook and on, in all the rest of the social networks, you can exponentially grow the audience that you're talking to. So. Tell me how that's been working. Is it post pandemic? Has that sort of continued? Um, so during the pandemic, everyone was on social media. That's all you really could do. Yeah. Right. right. right? I mean, everyone was everyone was reaching out to people through social media. And um post pandemic, I think a lot of people in in our opinion have tried to really limit social media because there's just so much on there that they, you know, you can get on Facebook and there's just, there's so many opinions on everything. <laughs> People get tired of being on there. They get tired of seeing bad news. They get tired of, you know, hearing about someone's belief on this and someone's belief on that. Um, so we really try to give out positive information on health and fitness. And it's not always easy, but I think that's what we've done is we've been consistent. Mm -hmm. We've consistently shown up to our, to our audience. We consistently post and show up every day and give information. You know, maybe it's a workout that we share, or mm -hmm. maybe it's a great recipe that we share. Maybe it's um, just a funny feel good, you know, like lighthearted real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just, mm -hmm. we share all of the things. We let them into our lives. So they know our families. They know us. And I think us consistently showing up for our audience has helped our audience share us. They've shared us with other people that we never would have reached before. Um, and I think that's, we think that's really cool that there's so many people out there that, that know us that don't really know us, but you know, we know them, but they don't really know them. <laughs> and what's funny Val, is we've actually ran into some people here at conference that follow us on social media. Y'all like, oh, are the wine girls. And we're like, Oh, hi. hi. We're, and That's what's great. ironic is we're down there getting ready for this. And we're like at the bar at 10 AM with our glasses of yeah, wine. Yeah, and we're right. like, well, this is actually for a little bit later. And <laughs> Can I take a selfie with you and your glass of wine at nine in the morning? That's great. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's, I think that's really important. Um, I think the difference between the traditional media and the things that we used to do to get customers and now mm -hmm. social is that there's been this veil in front of you. You don't really know the people. It's, it's all digital. And I think mm -hmm. you're moving the right direction direction in that you're creating relationships, even though they're digital, but they're getting to know you as a person and understand you and trust you because and I'm just sure. going to reflect on the, my company in the days that I shook the hands of every member because we stood at a booth somewhere and, and mm -hmm. talked about the program that that experience would carry through each shipment. Every time they got a box of wine, they would go, oh, yeah, I remember I met Paul or Larry, whoever was selling for me. And we had this conversation that's sort of the experiential part of it. And you lose that in traditional yeah. social networking because it's just a passing opinion or a post or whatever. And here you are inviting people into your lives to experience what you are and kind of running parallel with them. Yeah. Right. And that's what it is. We, and what's funny is someone might find us on social media, but we hop on a call with them and we talk about their goals. It's a personal, and it's funny because people just get away from that. Mm -hmm. And so that they know that when they jump in one of our client, new client rounds that you're going to get Angie and Gina, and we're going to hop on the call. We're going to talk about your struggles. We're going to talk about your goals. And then we're going to set you up for your personal you know, success journey. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a, you know, this is us and you know, we're going to talk to you about it. Where do they find you? You might be able to shake your hand, but <laughs> we're going to talk yeah, to you Yeah, well, it. that's right. It has to be a digital shake. <laughs> right. <laughs> Where, exactly. the, who, who knows? Maybe one day there'll be like a virtual shake. You actually may feel somebody's hand <laughs> that's scary, right? know, through the screen. But uh, where do we find Girl Gang Wellness? Is it um, on all the, all the social networks or YouTube or what? Yes. Yes. You can find girlgangwellness.com is our website. And then you can also follow us on Instagram. It's at Angie Alice. And, and I'm at white grapes and in shape. So the, the story behind nothing but cakes, you know, that, the uh, those bunt cake stores. <laughs> so, okay. good. So, good. <laughs> so the story was that they, and the reason I know this is because my, my daughter's a baker by trade and, and we thought that'd be a good idea for her. And we are trying to keep her in LA at the time. Well, she ends up in New York anyway, was we would, you know, buy one of these franchises and make these, you know, in, indulgent cakes, right? But okay. apparently the, the, the two husbands, well, one of them, apparently <laughs> there were two husbands, two wives, two husbands. Apparently one of the husbands just thought this was the stupidest idea ever. And that, of course, that ended up in divorce. But the other one, <laughs> the other one thought it was a good idea. So what do your husbands think about doing this? The, the, was there headwinds when you first started? Like, well, you guys are crazy. What are you going to do? Or, hey, this is a great idea. I'm very supportive of you because you're my wife and I want to make sure this happens for you. They will. And they're our biggest cheerleader, yeah. our biggest fans. And, you know, they support, you know, our merch and all the things <laughs> as well. And they just, they're like, get it, girls. I mean, they are. They're very supportive. And I feel like... um my husband is actually a dentist and, and I was teaching at that time. I'm from Dallas, but I was teaching in Oklahoma. So I was making the big bucks while he was in dental school. Let me tell you, Paul, we were making it in. And, you know, I felt like that, I mean, it was like negative on his side because he was in dental school. And so like student loans and everything with that. And then he um, became a dentist and, you know, I feel like that was a big part of it as well as he was just, you know, supporting, he, you back. supporting me back. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's awesome because our husbands are such close friends and mm -hmm. we are such close friends. And then our kids, funny, our are, kids are yes. close friends. We travel together as families. We've, I mean, we've been friends. We were in each other's weddings. Right. So our husbands are actually like, they're, they're like, keep going until you like, you're going to be at the top soon. You're going to be, yes. they're just, That's great. they're, they're really supportive. But sometimes they do make fun of us. They're like, oh, who are you talking to again? Shocker. Or, yeah, right. you know, we're like, hang on, we'll be right back. We're going to film a quick little reel. But this, they both seem very smart people that they <laughs> support you. This. There, yes. So, yeah. yes, yes. Because when the wife is happy, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, yeah, we're already on 40, 44 minutes here. So that's really been really fun. I do want to, who's in Dallas? I'm in Dallas. Yeah. Angie's in Dallas. Uh, wonderful a conversation I had um, with a Dallas cheerleader. Oh. Her story's fascinating. And I'm trying to remember her name now. And she owns a winery outside of Austin called Flat Creek. Okay. And fascinating story. Uh, the winery sounds fabulous because we've done a lot of, I've done a lot of wines in the years uh, from, from Texas, particularly the Lubbock sort of wine trail. 
uh, in between Fredericksburg and um, Fernwood or Fenwood or one of those places. There's a wonderful like string of wineries, Messina Hoff and a couple of others that make some pretty decent wines. Have you been to, have you looked at the Dallas, you know, the, the Texas wine industry at all? Yes. We actually got, our reception was actually at Delaney Vineyards. Outside oh, of wow. Grapevine. Yeah. Um, yes. And then we've been down to Fredericksburg. It's great. It's like the, you know, the Texas version of Napa, I guess, you know, and, but it's really, that area is amazing down there as well. But, Yes. And I don't know about that. You know, I haven't had, I, I know there's wine in Colorado and I know the Sun Belt. There's a lot of things in Arizona too, but I haven't had any. Have you had any, Gina, from there? I haven't. You oh. know, <laughs> I haven't lived in Colorado long enough to really venture out to any wineries in Colorado. Now, Angie and I did go to Napa together years ago. Um, Bless it, Paul. We it, were really young. We, were, we had no clue what we had. No yeah. clue. I will tell you, we did go to a, a vineyard that was incredible that we still barnett oh yeah it was probably the best time we had there in the view and it was just the whole experience there was awesome um it was amazing it and was, that is it, it, that is the reason you know that napa exists right because that experience is yes. the whole wine world is that way and wine should be experienced wine should not be um uh, corralled into some kind of a marketing angle. It should be strictly for the experience of the wine to, to understand the wine and maybe understand the history of the wine. I'm working on a new show um, oh. that is going to tell those stories. It has nothing to do with swirling, sniffing, or spitting because <laughs> I think those are really worthless. You know, no drones in the vineyard and nobody taking the horse. It's just taking the horse out and we're riding through the vineyard. This is going to be the backstories of history of wine. I mean, Attila the Hun waged battles in champagne we're going to talk about and learn about those stories and i think it's a lot to do with with food and culture and and, and nutrition and in your lifestyle that's you know we as, need to as, come on there as yeah. you do because as humans you know we've gone through all these evolutions and now we're in this point and i think that's a great point for the hum humanity is is health nutrition understanding your body understanding what you're putting in it is what you're taking out of it and even going as far as what you are what you eat eats if you can control that as well to make sure that you're just getting the best nutrition you can. But this has been a fascinating time together. Yes, yes. we've loved it all. Thank you. I don't want to take away from your pool time. So <laughs> you're good. The, the real kicker is we're out of wine now. Yeah. Oh, then we gotta, we gotta get you get you off this set. So refill. That's awesome. We'll, we gotta refill. Look forward to hearing the wrap up of the show and uh, connecting in the future on, on the same subject to see if we can peel back a little further. Okay, we'd awesome. love to. We'd love to come back on. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Cheers. Bye Cheers. Bye. <laughs> nice job, girls. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I didn't ask you this question. You got a minute? Yeah, sure. We'll plug this in. Can you plug this in, Steve, when we're done? It's a hard question, Paul. All right. <laughs> so here's a here's the. <laughs> well, we don't have to plug it. We're just say this is this is it. This is a book. Now you guys are in health. I'm not. I'm not. There's no pressure here because. I'm going to give you three choices of an answer and the average people getting right is 33%. So nobody really understands the, the answer, but this is a book. This is written by a doctor in France in, in the seventies called wine is the best medicine. Dr. E.A. Murray. He was a real MD uh, as well as a homeopathic doctor. And it's a book about human maladies, things like hypertension, diarrhea, fever, gout, that kind of stuff. And all the wines are French though. The answers are the three answers I'm going to give you are French wines. And so I'm going to give you a malady and I'll give you three choices. You'll have 10 seconds to talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> this is like a you know game show. And then <laughs> and give me an answer. And then the concept is, and this is important, because in the wine world, when you get certified for the Master of Wine or the Master Psalm or whatever you're doing, it's typically has a lot to do with what the justification to your answer is, not whether you got it right. Like, in other words, you taste a flight of Cabernet, you're supposed to guess what country it's from. You guess the country, but why did you guess Chile or why did you guess Australia? And that's what they really look for. So the question is, when I give you the an when you give me the answer, it's like you're going to have to come up with some reason. And okay. it could be because we really know we just want to give you the answer. All right, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna use sans, uh, um, uh, nervous depression, something you guys might be familiar with. Okay. You could have a glass of dry champagne. You could have a Madoc red, which would be a, basically a French Cabernet. Or you could have a Cote de Bon, which would be basically French Pinot Noir. 
which one of those three wines would you recommend to cure or at least relieve the symptoms of nervous depression? I think we got it. Oh, what do you got? <laughs> Cote de Beau, the Pinot Noir. But why? Because it is a very, um, more of like a dessert to us, like a spicy dessert that would pick someone right up. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, I'll buy that answer. But I was wrong. So. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to go champagne? <laughs> it's actually the Madoc Red. At least I'll, I'll read what the doctor says. But you might get the dosage right. What do you, how much of this Madoc Red do you think you should drink? The bottle. The bottle. <laughs> That's right. It would be two glasses, uh, one to two glasses per meal, which would equate to probably, what, four to five glasses, which would be basically a bottle. Yeah. yeah. And the reason that he chose Madoc as the thing is the um, the deficiencies of Phosphorus, basically, the deficiency is sometimes responsible for these states of psychic fatigue, which I love that word, psychic fatigue, is phosphorus deficiencies, phosphorus being an essential nutrient in the nerve cell, and apparently of the three choices I gave you, the Madoc Red has more of this phosphorus uh, contribution. So you got the dosage right, you got the answer wrong, that's okay. <laughs> Two-thirds of the like The dosage is always right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's a good bitter. point. I like that. <laughs> no matter what you're drinking, it's always right. <laughs> All right. Now we're done. <laughs> Cheers, folks. Nice Cheers. to see you. Cheers. Thanks, Take. Paul. Thanks so much. Take care. Thank you for listening to Wine Talks with Paul, Callum, Karen. Don't forget to subscribe because there's more great interviews on their way. And of course, all these podcasts are sponsored by the original Wine of the Month Club, 48 years in business. Don't forget to visit our website, wineofthemonthclub.com. Folks, have a great time out there in the wine world. Cheers.